Hi there and welcome, this is Jennifer McGuire. Today I'm showing you some fun ways to use the new Hero Arts liquid watercolors. I'm going to tell you up front this is a very long video. I apologize for that, but I have a lot of different cards to share. And also I need to mention that I am not an expert at watercolor. So this is really just a video showing fun ways for a crafter to play with a new watercolor product. I will link to Christina Werner, who is a watercolor pro, so you can learn some things from her. Also, I wasn't feeling good the few days that I shot this, so this video kind of jumps around and it's not my best video, but I really wanted to share these ideas with you in hopes that they'd inspire you too. As I mentioned, I am using the new Hero Arts watercolor today. However, you could use other liquid watercolors or even sometimes dye reinkers for these techniques. I'm first going to show you the watercolors, create some fun backgrounds with them in a few different ways, and then turn them into cards. Now these are the new Hero Arts liquid watercolors. They come in glass bottles with an eyedropper, which is a great way to apply these. There are eight colors, but that's really all you need because you can easily mix them to create any color that you want. These are very bright, pigment-based, transparent liquid watercolor. They're very easy to blend and to mix, and you can dilute them to any desired color intensity. So you can make these super soft, or you can keep them really vivid and bright and intense. So they are a lot of fun to play with, and you can get a lot of different results from them. I am using Tim Holtz Distress watercolor paper for all of the watercolor today. However, you can use any watercolor paper you may have. I'm also using a water brush right now, but I use a regular brush and water for most of the techniques in this video. So here you can see the eight colors, but again, you can mix these to get any color that you may want, and I'll show you that in this video. Another thing you can do is dip your brush directly into the bottle. I would make sure your brush is dry so you don't add water into your liquid watercolor and change it at all, but you can get really intense results by just using the brush and the water, uh, liquid watercolor itself. Or of course, you can easily add water to it to get a softer look. Now I have a little palette over here where I am mixing some colors. Here I just mixed one drop of red and one drop of yellow, and I can easily get a vivid orange color. Now this bottle, I have made so many, so many backgrounds from these and I haven't even put a dent into the amount of watercolor in these bottles. One drop goes a long way. So these watercolor bottles should last you a while. Keep in mind you can use these liquid watercolors as you would any other watercolors. But I'm going to show you some fun things that you can do since they are liquid in the little dropper bottles. So let's go and create some backgrounds. For all of my backgrounds, I start with my Tim Holtz Distress Watercolor Paper taped onto a cutting board. This keeps it flat and I can tilt it and pick it up and move it aside while it dries. Okay, so let's do the drip and spritz technique. I have no idea what to call this. I'm sure there's some fancy names for all of these things, but I'm just playing and having some fun. And this one is really fun to do. Here I'm just touching the end of the eyedropper onto my paper with a few different colors of the liquid watercolors. So I'm not squeezing the top because I don't want big drops, just little touches here and there. I'm using deep ocean, indigo, and pine. I've done this technique in the past in different ways, but it works really well with these drops of liquid watercolor. Here I have a water spritz bottle and I'm spritzing it from about a foot above and I'm going to spritz until I see the color start to travel. Now you don't want to overdo it or you lose that cool like veiny looking effect. So I'm just going to spray it a few times until I'm happy with the results and then I'm going to stop. <laughs> now I'm adding a little heat with my heat gun to dry some of it and if you want to you can use the edge of like a dry cloth to absorb any of the bigger drops that are left behind or just set it aside and let it dry. Now for this one, I added much more watercolor down, adding some water to it, and you can see how intense this is. Some of those big drops I wanted to get rid of, but I didn't want to keep spraying because I lose the effect. So I'm just going in with that dry cloth and just absorbing up a few of those really bold drops that are left behind. And here you can see the fun look that you get. Now some of these will not look good until they dry. In fact, they sometimes look better once you trim them down. But here's what they look like just dry. And look at the fun looks that you can get. So in the end of this video, I'll show you how I turned all of these into cards. 
Again, if you are unhappy with your results, trim them down. You may end up liking them. I really like the bold color that I got here by putting more of the watercolor down. If you want a softer look, one thing that you can do, like I have here, is to mix the watercolor in your little palette with some water, then use a paintbrush to add those drops and do the spritzing. Here I did a few drops of yellow and red watercolor together, the dandelion and strawberry, and got a fun look with that too. Okay, next I wanted to show you how easy it is to create a soft background with liquid watercolor. In my palette, I've added some water, and to that water, I'm going to add just a couple drops of the indigo liquid watercolor. Now there I have a water and watercolor mix that's nice and light blue and consistent. So I can take a dry brush and just go and paint my background and I can be sure it will be even and I won't get like areas that are darker because I'm picking up too much watercolor, whatever, because I have that perfect mix created that I keep going back to. Now this can also be good for kind of creating a soft watercolor look that you can add more techniques on top of. So here I did the soft background with the, the diluted watercolor. Then I went and dried it and added some drops so I could do the spritz technique. So this results in more color in the background instead of having that white in the background. So you can layer a lot of this, these techniques on top of each other. And all of these I'll turn into cards at the end of the video. Okay, next I wanted to show you how you can very easily add shimmer to your liquid watercolor. So I've put drops of liquid watercolor into my palette, and now I'm putting in a tiny bit of Perfect Pearls into each of the colors. I'll mix them and then I can paint with them as I would a regular watercolor, but this way it'll have shimmer to it. Perfect Pearls are a uh, pigment powder, sorry, a pigment powder that just adds beautiful shine. So once this dries, when I tilt it in the light, it will have this gorgeous shimmer to it. This is a great way to get that shimmer watercolor look without having to buy specialty watercolors. Now I could add as much color as I want to on here, but I wanted a soft background. It's kind of hard to see the shimmer in the video, but it does have that gorgeous shine. And I really like how a little goes a long way with the liquid watercolors, so I was able to create a bunch of backgrounds. Okay, next I just wanted to show you a bunch of examples of some quick backgrounds that you can create. Here I'm just putting down some big drops of liquid watercolor. I'm being very generous with the color because I want this to be vivid. Then I'm coming in with a wet brush and adding quite a bit of water to this. You can do less water if you want to. I just really like the look of putting down a lot of water so I can do the trick that I'm about to show you. You could leave it like this to dry and get beautiful results. But what I like to do is come in with a heat gun and force the color to move around and force spots to dry, just spots here and there, so that I can get some variation in the background. It almost looks like granite or some sort of crystally kind of rock. I don't know. But it just gives this beautiful variation that I think is really unique and fun. Now you do push some of the watercolor off to the side, but you can put that to good use. You could do a smooshing technique, or here, I'm just doing that same technique I showed you at the beginning of the video by spraying some of the drops. So again, a little watercolor goes a long way. Another thing you can do is put water onto your watercolor paper. Here I'm putting a lot down. You can have more control if you put less water down. But when you drop the liquid watercolor into the water, it just does really fun things. And Lila and I had so much fun playing with this because it just simply looks cool. Now you could leave this to dry on its own and it'll give beautiful results. Or you can add in color and move it around either with a brush or using your heat gun. But I think regardless of how you apply the watercolor, you'll always get beautiful results because the colors are so intense. So here are a few of the backgrounds I created using those two techniques I just showed you of either putting down the drops and then adding water or putting down water and then adding drops. And you can see that by kind of pushing the watercolor around with my heat gun, I was able to get some beautiful looking backgrounds. If you want them to be more smooth, more even, you could just let them dry completely on your own. So those are some fun things that you can do with the liquid watercolors for backgrounds. 
And Lila wanted to get in on this too. She was creating with me and wanted to be a part of the video. So here she is creating her rainbow background. She is covering the watercolor paper with water. And then she's going to add the liquid watercolor and just let the water do the work for her. So this is wet on wet and it'll just create this beautiful rainbow background. So this is very easy to do and I have to say that her background is definitely my favorite of all of them. I think I'll definitely have to do the rainbow next time. So anyways, I wanted to include this in the video also. Now in addition to creating backgrounds, you can use the liquid watercolor to simply paint in your stamped images for simple watercoloring. Now I decided to use the Hero Arts Magnolia wood block stamp. This is a beautiful detailed stamp and I white heat embossed it onto watercolor paper. Now when I'm doing this, I have one drop of the indigo liquid watercolor in my little palette and I'm picking it up with my water brush and applying it into the flower. Then I drip, dip my water brush into a drop of the wine liquid color so I can add some purple kind of in towards the center of the petal. You can see it drop in there. And I'm not adding anything to that. I'm not like working to move this color around. I'm letting the water move it for me. I do skip around to different areas because I don't like to color in two areas next to each other for fear that they'll bleed into each other and kind of take away from the look that I'm going for. Again, I am not an expert at this. I just like doing it and so I let the water do the work for me and I just apply the color however I want. So here you can see the final result. I do like to go in right into like the nooks and crannies and add some dark color. And that's it. You just let it dry and it'll dry beautiful. Okay, so now we have a bunch of pieces ready to go. Let's create some cards. Now most of my cards use the new Hero Arts Nesting Rounded Rectangle die set. This is a fantastic die set. It has 16 dies in it. Pretty much any size you could possibly need. And it's great for creating windows in the center of your card with a nice rounded look to them. So here I have a four by five and a quarter piece of white cardstock. So it's slightly smaller than my note card. And I'm die cutting one of those rec rounded rectangles from the center. This creates a beautiful simple frame and I can put one of my crazy watercolors behind it and it gives it a nice framed look. So I'm putting foam tape on the back of my frame and I'll glue this onto my little watercolor piece here. This background piece was the one that I did the wash first, like the soft blue, and then I added the drops and spritz them. So I'll add this onto a four and a quarter by five and a half inch note card. I can add that flower that I watercolored. And then I added a simple sentiment. The sentiment that I'm adding is from the Hero Arts Support Prayers Love stamp set. Now 100% of the net profits of this stamp set go to support the KIND campaign, which works to end bullying. This stamp set has great sentiments of encouragement and support. I'm using the message that says, I'm here for you, on several of the cards that I'm creating today, along with the you're in my prayers and sending you prayers. So on this card, I use the I'm here for you. It's the perfect size to stamp on a thin cardstock strip and add to your card just about anywhere. So here you can see a closer look at the card. We have the background that we created with the spritzing. We have the watercolor flower, and I added a few simple pearls. I really like how the rounded rectangle die creates a nice little frame to kind of pull everything together in the center. Okay, so my next card example features the Hero Arts Swallowtail stamp set. I've been looking for a realistic layering stamp set of a butterfly for some time, and this fits the bill. So you can do a layered butterfly and a layered flower, but I'm just going to do the butterfly today. I'm going to fly through this since I have so many examples to show you, but basically I stamp the bottom layer with blue ink. It's cornflower blue from Hero Arts. And then I inked up just the body with a caramel ink and stamp that. The next layer that I'm going to stamp is with black ink, and this adds all the details to the butterfly. Look how beautiful this is right away. And then the final layer adds some dark blue details. I use the Hero Arts Indigo Blue ink to stamp this. And there we have a beautiful blue butterfly. Now you can make your butterfly any color you want. That's the fun of stamping. It doesn't have to be realistic, but you could create this in any color that you want. 
I went ahead and die cut him out, and I also used a rounded rectangle die to create kind of an off-the-edge frame. I stamped the sentiment that says fluttering by with a friendly high from that same Hero Arts Swallowtail Butterfly stamp set. So I'm adding one of my spritzed backgrounds, which I trimmed down. I cut it in half so I can actually get two cards out of the one background. Now I'm putting an obscene amount of double-sided tape onto the back of my frame. I'm a big fan of making sure that it's even raised dimension. So you got to put a lot of foam tape down. And then I'm adding my butterfly. Very simple. So once you've created a bunch of backgrounds, you can just use some framed eyes and whatever stamps you want to pull it together into a quick card. And there you can see that fun part of the background. Such a cool technique with those liquid watercolors. Okay, for my next example, I stepped up my frame a little bit. I die cut my rectangle window from white cardstock. Then I took a rounded rectangle die that is a little bit bigger and I'm taping it into place right around the window. I'm setting up my die cut machine as I would if I were doing an embossing folder. You should be able to do this with pretty much any die cut machine. Next I'm putting down my embossing mat. This has a little bit of a cushion so that when you run your paper and die through with it, it allows the die to press into your paper instead of cut. So you get that nice impression, a nice finishing touch. So I turned this into a card. Can't show all the steps, but I created these cute little swan and cattail images. They were so fast to color because swans are white. So I just added a little bit of gray with my Copic markers. And for the stamping, I used the Hero Arts Swans and Cattails, cattails stamp set. This is a great stamp set with lots of little elements that you can use together to create a scene. Now the sentiment that says sending you prayers is white heat embossed from the prayer support love stamp set that I showed you earlier. Okay, moving right along, my next example uses two of the backgrounds that I created earlier in this video. I also use the new Hero Arts Swan stamp set. This is a beautiful layering set. And what's really cool about this set is you can layer your swan and then there's also a stamp to create the shadow on the water, which I think is really cool. So I had to use that in a card today. So I stamped the swan, very easy to line up and stamp. And I cut him out, but then I'm using the shadow stamp of the water and I'm stamping that onto one of my spritz backgrounds that I created earlier. So I'm stamping that with a cornflower blue ink. So it kind of looks like it's a shadow on the water. And there you can see the little swan that I stamped and cut out. And then on the top, I'm doing that really soft blue watercolor background. So I trim them down. I can actually get two cards from each of these backgrounds. Now I did create a frame using a rounded rectangle and you can see my two pieces of watercolor backgrounds in the background. I use there for you sentiment from that support prayers and love stamp set that I've been using several times in this video. And you can see how beautiful that layering swan is with its shadow in the water. I think that's really cool to do. So next we'll move from swans to elephants and I'm using the new Hero Arts elephant stamp set that you see there on the right. Now this is a great layering set because it has the realistic looking elephant and then you'll notice there's an outline image on the top. So you can use that with the layering or alone and then just add your own color to the outline. There's a big elephant and a small elephant and some cute sentiments. I'm also using the Hero Arts Huge Thanks stamp set. This is inspired by one of the previous Hero Arts kits and I really like the huge thanks sentiment that is included in it. Okay, so here I just wanted to show you how easy it is to layer these up. I stamped the bottom layer with Hero Arts Soft Granite Ink. Then I'm coming in with the second layer and I'm stamping that with the Hero Arts Charcoal Ink. And then I will do the outline with black ink. Now these are easy to line up since you're lining up the outside of the image, like the outer edge. So you can easily look from the side and see that they're lined up before you do your stamping. You really don't need to use a stamp positioner for this, but it really is helpful when you're creating a few examples like I am here. And again, I like that you can do different looks with the one stamp set. You can do the outline or the layering. 
So here's a card that I created with my little layered elephant. This one, I just created a little side window and I have some bold blue watercolor behind it. I thought this would be a great card to give to my brother. It's got a masculine look to it. Then here's a little more playful version. I added the little elephant onto him and I stamped the sentiment that says, I remembered your birthday. And you can see one of the spritz watercolor backgrounds behind it. Okay, so I decided to use a bunch of these watercolor backgrounds really fast to create cards by using frame dies. Now this one in the middle here is the Hero Arts Birds and Branches frame die. This creates a very quick window frame with lots of detail. So I die cut it from some white cardstock and I put some foam tape on the back of it. And all I have to do is put this over my watercolor background. But first I use my anti-static powder tool and I'm going to stamp a sentiment with Versamark ink and then white heat emboss it. I think it's best to do your embossing before you glue the frame on top so you can easily knock off the excess uh, embossing powder before you heat set it. And you definitely want to use an anti-static powder tool to keep it nice and crisp. I also added a little bird from the Birds and Banner die set. Very quick, so I just die cut two things, white heat embossed one sentiment, and I added a few pearls here and there. And you can see the beautiful watercolor background peeking through. And by the way, that bird comes with this little banner die, which would work great on these backgrounds too. I love the detail that's added into that bird die, so it has lots of dimension. Now the sentiment on that is from the Hero Arts Layered Topiary stamp set. This has some beautiful sentiments in there, and my favorite is just a note to say hello. Okay, now for many of my examples, I use these two sets. I use the Hero Arts Floral Border Frame Die, which you see on the left, and the Hero Arts Hello Stamp and Die Set. That's a die and a stamp set that are sold together. That one's been out for a long time, but I reach for it often. So here you can see one of my watercolor backgrounds. It was a little wild and crazy, but when you put this beautiful frame around it and the simple sentiment on the inside, it kind of pulls it together and gives it a nice softer look. I did add dimension behind my frame so it stood up a little bit. And then I added some pearls here and there. But all of those sentiments are die cut from white cardstock and then white heat embossed with a little sentiment underneath it. This is definitely my favorite background. I love how vivid those colors are and the fun look I got by using the heat gun to kind of move the color around. So you can see this design was kind of what I went to at the end when I wanted to create a bunch of cards very quickly. Something that you can do with pretty much any kind of background. Just put a beautiful frame die cut around it and a simple sentiment in the center. Lila chose to use this design for her card too. So she did the floral frame, the hello die cut, and then she added a bunch of pearls to her card. She really likes those pearls and using that little jewel picker to add them into the glue. I thought her card turned out great and thankfully she gave it to me for Valentine's Day so I get to keep it forever. Okay, now for this one, I really liked how this background turned out, but it was pretty bold. So I decided to keep the card very clean by creating my rounded rectangle frame and then I added a single white feather die cut to the center along with the I'm here for you sentiment that I've used on a lot of these cards. Now that feather is from Hero Arts and I like that it cuts little details that you can kind of pull up to give a little bit of dimension to them. I also used the feather for this very simple card. This features one of the shimmer watercolor backgrounds that I showed you earlier. Now my next card here features the Hero Arts Topiary stamp set. Now this one was really fun to make and I wasn't sure how it would go, but I was thrilled with the results. This is another layering stamp set where you can stamp clusters of leaves three times in three different colors to create your little topiary. So you've got the small, large, and medium clusters of leaves. Then you've got the little pot. There's die cuts available to cut all of this out. And I created that with some foam tape behind it for some fun dimension. And my final card, super simple. I used one of my favorite spritz backgrounds and I created a rectangle frame. And I used the Hero Arts Swan layering die. This one again cuts little pieces that you can kind of pull up for dimension. I cut it from white cardstock, added the hello die cut over it, and then the stamped I'm here for you below that. 
Okay, so there you have it. I will admit I made some more cars that I didn't include in the video. So be sure to go to my blog to check that out along with photos of all of these cards. I know there was a lot of information in here, but I sure hope this inspires you to try liquid watercolors or even try some of these techniques with watercolors you may already have. All of the uh, supplies that I use are linked in my YouTube description below. But again, head to my blog for more information. Thanks for sticking with me through this video. I hope you have a great day and we'll see you soon.